The problem here is that the international community actually has to come to an agreement of what it is that they want to achieve uh, ultimately and how they're going to enforce it. And that also means enforcement cannot only work based on sanctions, but probably needs a military component. So the parties involved need to be ready to send potentially military force into Libya, uh, whether it's a peacekeeping force or a peace enforcement force. Uh, and I think there is probably the biggest obstacle at the moment because neither the United States want to get involved in the Middle East and the Europeans don't want either. Um, I think the British and the French might be most likely to do so. And the question is whether the Germans are willing to do so to, to back them up. The most important thing for Putin here is to uh, play the role of a disruptor and he's willing to switch from one side to the other if it suits him so. Turkey has always been quite firmly on the side of the GNA, the UN-backed government, um, and fighting Haftar because they've seen Haftar as a highly problematic proxy in the region, a proxy of the United Arab Emirates. So for them it's more of an ideological as well as um, now economic war uh, because they obviously want, the Turks want to have access to the eastern Mediterranean and for them this is very much also about the oil. Um, and that's, but they have been quite involved for a long time. Both Turkey and Russia have realized that they need to work together because both of them are on the fringes of the West uh, or being on the outside of any Western uh, uh, you know, uh, consensus. And they are kind of the, they could be the disrupting force on the outside um, that kind of want to keep the West in check. The thing is, the, the Libyan conflict has always been around a constant threshold. So we've never seen uh, a disappearance of crisis since very much the beginning of the revolution in 2011. Well, you know, hostilities have never really ceased. There are always climaxes of and escalations that come and then are followed by a certain period, relatively short periods of de-escalation. Um, I think currently, we're, we're heading towards a, a lull in the conflict, uh, somewhat of a, a, a constant. We're not, gonna, we're not going to see a, a major de-escalation because I think the warring factions on the ground still think they can make more ground and gain more ground through military action and violence. Particular Haftar has shown to be very, very unreliable. Um, he has disappeared from, uh, from the Berlin Conference. He hasn't really cooperated as people thought. Uh, he didn't cooperate with the Russians when he was invited to, to go there last week. So I think from that point of view, I think Haftar still thinks that he can use the current uh, end of hostilities to reorganize, regroup and probably start another offensive because it's not the first uh, time that uh, Haftar has called a zero hour. He's called many zero hours before and he still thinks that he should be the man who runs the country and he's not someone who wants to be controlled by any form of civilian power. So it's highly uh, likely that he will use this current, uh, this current stalemate, if you will, to, uh, to further build uh, up his forces to take, uh, take another try at uh, taking uh, Tripoli. Oil and gas plays a very important uh, role. We shouldn't forget Libya, uh, unlike other conflicts in the Middle East, I mean other countries in the Middle East, Libya is a very rich country that could be very easily stabilized because the money is there. It's not a broken economy, it's a very small population and it has a lot of proven oil and gas reserves, particularly now also offshore. Um, the, the deal that was struck between the GNA and Turkey recently about extraction rights and, and a potential pipeline in the eastern Mediterranean really places this conflict at the midst of the ongoing rivalry over the, over the East Med, which involves Turkey, which uh, involves Egypt, which involves also Israel and Lebanon, which involves also Greece. Uh, and there are now uh, different components of that conflict coming in, particularly between Greece uh, and Turkey, because Greece doesn't want Turkey to basically build the pipeline the way it wants to build the pipeline. Plus, it doesn't think the Turks should have the same extraction rights in these areas that they've now